brought to you by fantasyhurling.ie and fantasygaelicfootball.com. Enter now and win over €2,300 worth of prizes. Less than 1% of people who could benefit from treatment from problem gambling ever seek it. Extern Problem Gambling provides support for anyone affected by problem gambling and offers remote services by fully qualified and accredited addiction counsellors. Here to talk to us today is All-Ireland winning footballer with our man Cross McGlenn, Oisin McConville. Oisin, how are you doing? In his form, all uh, good here, yeah. Thank good, you. good to hear it. Um, obviously, you've had your own uh, issues with gambling over the years. Um, how big of a problem is it just at the moment? Yeah, it's been a it's been a growing problem for some time. I think uh, I have said about that it's a tsunami that's that's coming down the track, and uh, I suppose it's a little bit different when somebody like me is here. Maybe not the problem that it was, but I think look at I think it's recognised now that. Uh, you know, within sport, it's a massive problem, but also look within society, uh, it's huge, 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 more access. Gambling is more accessible than it's ever been. Uh, not only that, but I think we've introduced a whole new demographic of people uh, to gambling. Uh, we can gamble on a multitude of of different things. I think people are starting to gamble at stage. Um, and I think a lot of that gambling is happening online, so that makes it, you know, a very secretive thing. Uh, so it's a very secretive addiction. It's got the highest rate of suicide of all the addictions. Uh, and as I say, at this stage, I think you know it's a it's a massive issue uh, that needs huge attention. Mm. And obviously, I'd, I'd imagine that lockdown has intensified this. Now, things are opening up more in the north than they are here at the moment. But do you think that that silently is overwhelming a lot of people in this past year? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, an increase of 60% uh, as far as per capita spend. I think, you know, we aren't up the league table in a lot of things you know, but we are third in the world um, as far as spend per per uh, per adult uh, in our population. Uh, Australia leads the way in that, and I, I think that I've said this on numerous occasions, but there was a girl called Samantha Th- Thomas who looks after a lot of so with sports people, and uh, she came here and she described Ireland as the Wild West. So that'll give you an idea of the sort of uh, you know, the sum we are as far a lot of people look to us, uh, I suppose, in times of uh, look, a lot of people, you know, get introduced to just out of pure boredom. A lot of people get introduced because of their massive interest in sport. Uh, I think if you watch any sports uh, broadcast, it doesn't really matter what the actual sport is, but there is a huge uh, correlation between. Uh, gambling and sport, and I say that doesn't necessarily have to be horse racing. It could be, it could be anything like darts. It could be tennis. It could be, you know, the chances are you're going to know what the prices are. Talking about uh, betting and running and all those sort of things, and and uh, and as I say, the whole thing has changed as far as you know what we can. Along, I think because of that, that's why we have the issue that we have. Add in lockdown to that, and just exacerbates the situation mm. and is there anything you'd like to see policy wise would you like to see gambling advertising banned across the board sorry you broke up say that again. Oh, sorry Oshin. i was just going to say is there anything you'd like to see done policy wise even gambling ban gambling advertising banned across the board well, Shane, let's start at the at the very beginning, that sort of thing. I mean, gambling companies regulate themselves, okay? So um, we don't have a gambling regulator. We, we are told that that's coming down the track. But... So I think gal- uh, the legislation is from the 1950s. That means not the base. Reg- so we need to have a, a full-time regulator. And the regular needs to be stringent. So we're missing, um, you know, thir- 12, 13, 14 year olds to gambling. 
Um, I think that is very prevalent right now. And I think the last part of that jigsaw is, is some moratorium around uh, advertising. So if there is a, a watershed on when we can advertise, uh, I think gab- gambling advertising is obviously uh, very prevalent uh, no matter what we're, we're watching. A lot of time, it's a lot of our sports heroes. And I think if that is targeted at young people, I think it definitely uh, to start gambling. And I think uh, you know we need to get we need to get a handle on our some way. I mean, it, it's just it's we're at saturation point with it. And I think really you know people kept saying you know people said three years ago you know gambling advertising is a massive issue. You don't. You know, at this point, and it's not having the penetration that it's having. Gambling companies have come out, you know, recently and they're why do it then? Do you know what I mean? Like, talk about insulting people's intelligence. So, I think, look, we need to do something around the advertising, but also the 